So on November 7th, the PS5 Pro released, but in much more interesting and less stupid news, Death Stranding came to Xbox. There was a nice juicy little shadow drop there, which I was super not expecting. I don't think anyone was really expecting. I do find it funny that we have like 50 bajillion different Xbox insiders and gaming insiders, and I didn't see a single report of this happening until it happened. Stuff like that always just makes me chuckle, because we have all those like top tier gaming insiders who spit out like 50 reports of things happening, allegedly happening. They, you know, they shoot out 50 a week and then maybe one of them comes true on a different day that they predicted. And then somehow that means they're all totally awesome and great insiders and know everything. I'm so burnt out on gaming insider culture. I'm sure you are too. So it's just funny to me when something really major, like a big PlayStation exclusive franchise shadow drops on Xbox, there was just crickets leading up to that because apparently that's something that can happen completely in the cover of darkness, but I digress. And while I'm throwing shade at all the Xbox insiders, I would like to throw some additional shade at all of the Xbox insiders who not only claimed Gears of War 6 would be Gears of War 6 and not a prequel called Gears of War E-Day, and I would also like to throw shade at all the gaming insiders who have said like 50 million times there's going to be a Gears of War Marcus Phoenix collection. Where is it? The reports of this have been floating around for like three years, donde esta? But again, by all means, let's continue taking the insiders seriously. Ugh, anyways. So Death Stranding Shadow dropped on Xbox on the most hilarious day possible, which was the PS5 Pro launch day. And frankly, I think this is a very big deal, but the reasoning behind it, I wanna talk about first, because as much as some people might wanna say that this is Sony opening up, I wanna point out that this was not Sony's decision. Rather, this was Kojima Productions buying the Death Stranding IP and then putting the game on Xbox themselves. This was not Sony funding an Xbox version of the game, nor do I think it's a direct roadmap to other PlayStation games coming to Xbox. Yet. Because, I mean, even if this was Sony being like, eh, let's throw a game on Xbox, it wouldn't even be the first time they've done that. I hate when people just act like games like MLB The Show and Destiny 2 don't exist. These Sony published games with the PlayStation logo in the opening splashes readily available on Xbox. But again, I digress. I feel like I'm digressing a lot these days. But Death Stranding coming to Xbox, and more specifically, Kojima Productions buying out their own IP, I think it ties in nicely to reports that came out not too long ago about Square Enix saying they're not going to be doing PlayStation exclusivity anymore. And it seems like every month or so, Square Enix just hammers that home even more. They, they keep reiterating that they're not doing console exclusivity anymore. They want more games available on more platforms because, shocker, that's how you make more money. If you're a first party developer, you're owned by the company that makes the console. Obviously, it's not really up to you whether or not you get the game on more platforms because obviously your game is only going to be available on the platforms that your publisher demands they be available on, which nine times out of 10 is just going to be the console that they make money off of and also maybe the PC or the Switch because those two ecosystems are pretty separate from the general mainstream console ecosystem. When I talk about the console ecosystem, we're obviously talking about PlayStation and Xbox, whereas the PC and the Switch kind of exist in their own little world. That being said, those worlds have a lot of money to be made, and it's nice to see publishers realizing that over the last few years, but something interesting that's happening here is when a developer is not owned by a publisher, there seems to be less and less incentive to stick with the console-owning publishers. You see this with Square Enix, you now see this with Kojima Productions, and it goes back to what I've been saying for years and what a lot of game developers have been saying for years. If you put years and years of time and money and work and passion into a piece of art, why would you want that piece of art arbitrarily restricted to a platform that not everyone is going to want? Contrary to console fanboy belief, a piece of gaming software is perfectly capable of existing on any gaming platform. There is nothing about the PlayStation or the Xbox that completely restricts the software from being ported to other platforms. There is nothing there preventing it other than a contract from the console-owning company. And Death Stranding going to Xbox, I think, is further evidence that the people making these games don't want to be held back by console exclusivity. They don't want to be held back by corporate restrictions, especially not Kojima. Are you kidding me? Have you looked at this dude? You think this dude cares about where Sony's numbers are going? He doesn't give a shit. 
And then there's also the part of my brain that looks at this situation, can't help but think about From Software, who has openly said multiple times that they want games like Bloodborne to be available on other platforms, because From Software is a multi-platform company, and a game that they're obviously very proud of, and a game that many people consider to be one of their best, if not their actual best, is locked to a console from the early 2010s, which they can't possibly be happy about, especially since Sony seems to have no actual plans for the Bloodborne IP. I really wouldn't be surprised if From Software takes a cue from Kojima Productions here and tries to buy out the rights to their IP that Sony technically owns. But I alluded to something earlier in the video and I said that I don't think Death Stranding is an indication of Sony exclusive games or Sony published games going to Xbox yet. I threw in that word yet. And here is why. And also, just a little side note, I don't think this should have been really that surprising, given the fact that Death Stranding was already available on PC Game Pass through the Xbox app. So it's not like an Xbox port was completely off the table, but anyways, that's kind of besides the point. I would not be the least bit surprised if Death Stranding does well on the Xbox and Sony sees this as an opportunity to start porting some of their older games to the Xbox under the PlayStation Studios publishing branch or the Sony Interactive publishing branch, the same way that they have been doing with franchises like MLB The Show. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Death Stranding does well and then maybe a year or two and then we start seeing franchises like Spider-Man or maybe Horizon, the really easily marketable stuff that isn't like totally tied to PlayStation. Well, maybe Horizon not so much, but Spider-Man is a global brand. You really think if Spider-Man went to Xbox, people wouldn't be buying it? People wouldn't be jumping on that? And with Gears of War scheduled to make a comeback in the next few years, you really think a franchise like Uncharted or maybe something like Killzone would not absolutely absolutely do gangbusters on the Xbox. The well, that is assuming PlayStation then has to actually put some money into Killzone, which they've proven time and time again they are not willing to do. And what about the Souls games that they're just sitting on? Games like Bloodborne and Demon's Souls. The Soulsborne games that FromSoft makes, do they do they do very well on Xbox. They do very well on every platform. Why not bring Demon Souls to the Xbox? It would be the first time that game was available on an Xbox system. And if they really are working on a Bloodborne remake, why not throw that on the Xbox? Because we're at the point in a console's lifespan where if you don't have a PlayStation, you're probably not going to get one. And the same goes for Xbox. If you haven't switched over to the Xbox yet, at this point in the console's life cycle, you're probably just not going to. And I think that's why Sony and Microsoft are both putting a lot of money into the PC, moving games over to the PC, because they've accepted that PC gamers are not going to switch over to console. They've, that's just something that's not going to happen. And they've stopped pretending like that's something that's going to happen. But now that we're at like the midpoint of these consoles' life cycles, which is honestly kind of embarrassing given how lackluster both consoles have been this year, or I guess this season, this cycle. Why not take some older, risk-free games, throw them on the other console? It's not like you're going to entice people over to the, your side at this point because it would have happened already. What harm is there in making a low-cost port to the Xbox the same way that Xbox is making relatively low-cost ports to the PlayStation? Xbox has accepted they're not going to entice PlayStation players over to the Xbox, and Sony, by putting games on PC, we know that, they have, that they've accepted the fact they're not going to entice PC gamers over to the PlayStation. It's about time they recognize they're not going to get a lot of Xbox players over to the PlayStation either, because there are a lot of people who are just loyal to one system. And the PC gamer in me thinks that's very strange, being so loyal to a plastic box with a big logo on it, but it is a reality of the situation. There are a lot of people who no matter what games you throw on the PlayStation and keep from the Xbox, they're not going over there. The same way that there's a lot of people on the PlayStation that no matter how many games are on the Xbox, they're not going over there. And these people just don't want to get gaming PCs, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think you should. It's way better over here. But at this point in the console's life cycle, especially with the consoles being so expensive, why not just throw games on the platform that people already have and make money off of an ecosystem that you otherwise would not have? Kojima putting Death Stranding on the Xbox is not indicative of Sony putting games on the Xbox, but it could be a little nudge in that direction. 
assuming the game does well, which I think it will. I don't know if it's going to do, you know, amazingly, because it was just such a random shadow drop on a rather news-filled day if you're a console gamer. But Death Stranding has proven on PlayStation and PC that it has very long legs in the sales department. This is a game that benefits greatly from word of mouth, so I absolutely expect Death Stranding to have very steady sales on the Xbox for a very long time, especially as Death Stranding 2 gets closer. And now that Kojima owns the IP, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Death Stranding 2. Is Death Stranding 2 going to get an Xbox release? It's probably not going to launch on the Xbox, but it's almost certain that it's going to come to the Xbox eventually now, because why would you put the first one on the Xbox if you're not going to put the sequel on the Xbox, especially now that you own the IP and there's a presumably no contractual reason why it can't go to the Xbox, at least maybe not after a timed exclusivity window, because I'm sure Sony thought ahead on that. They've been marketing Death Stranding 2 as a big PS5 exclusive. There's no way that they signed over the IP to Kojima Productions without having some kind of provisions in there regarding Death Stranding 2's exclusivity, but I digress again. Do you like how much I'm digressing today? As someone who just wants console exclusivity to go away, and who thinks platform exclusivity is the dumbest, most anti-consumer thing on the planet, I welcome stuff like this. I absolutely welcome developers buying their own IPs out from publishers who clearly don't care about the artistry, and who clearly don't care about the craft, and just want something to add to their list of things that other people can't have. I welcome this with open arms, and I hope every single third-party developer with IP that is tied up under Sony, or tied up under Microsoft, or tied up under Nintendo, I absolutely encourage you to buy out those IP and get it on other platforms. The main ones that come to mind obviously being From Software, and now that I think about it, flipping Bayonetta. Why the frick is Bayonetta exclusive to Nintendo? Why can I buy Bayonetta 1 on Steam, but 2 and 3 are locked to Nintendo consoles? Guys, Platinum, cut a deal, what are you doing? Ugh, I welcome this, I welcome this. Whenever a game loses exclusivity, I am 100% on board for it. And the fact that Death Stranding lost its exclusivity by a creator taking their creation back from a publisher, I 1000% back this, and I want to see more of it. Toodles.